I've been using the Pixel 9 Pro for over two weeks now, and I wanna share with you guys my experience, talk about the pros and cons of using this phone, and whether I think you should get this over the S24 Ultra or the new iPhone 16 Pro. And of course, I'll be reviewing the new Apple devices compared to the Pixel 9 Pro, and maybe even make an iPhone 16 versus iPhone 16 Pro comparison. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. The Pixel 9 Pro is my very first Pixel phone ever. Although I've heard good things about them in the past, I've never really considered getting one mainly due to its design. When it comes to buying anything, design is always something that I consider. Of course, functionality is very important, the most important thing, but I also want it to look good. Maybe it's just the architect in me, but this year, I think Google nailed it out of the park, albeit a certain park from Cupertino, California. I'm just kidding, but come on, you gotta admit, it kind of looks like an iPhone. From the glass back, glossy aluminum frame, and even the radius of the corners are similar, and even in hand, it feels very similar. But when you see the punch hole instead of the dynamic island or even the camera bar, then you know it's not an iPhone. And truthfully, I don't really care about who copied who or anything like that. I care more about the execution and if a company can implement those ideas better. And when it comes to overall design, I do love how the Pixel looks. I think it looks sophisticated, modern, and different. But for everyday use, I find the glossy frame to be too slippery probably the most slippery phone I've ever used. And I don't really know why that is, but before switching to the Pixel 9 Pro, I hated using the Pixel 9 Pro XL because of the experience of using it without a case. One-handed use with a bigger phone is already tricky, so it being slippery made it even worse. But after switching to the regular Pixel 9 Pro, that wasn't much of an issue anymore just because this size is just so much more manageable. And it's essentially the same spec phone other than battery size, which is not really a big thing for me. But if the XL had added functionality for productivity like the S24 Ultra or the Z Fold 6, then I would happily deal with that phone size. But just like the iPhone Pro Maxes, I just found them to be big without a purpose. The display of the Pixel 9 Pro is actually really nice. The texts are sharp, the colors are vibrant and contrasty, it's pleasant for typical phone task and really enjoyable for consuming content. Thanks to its 3000 nits of peak brightness, I have no issues looking at the screen in direct sunlight. When using my phone for navigation while traveling, I had no issues at all. But of course, glare is another thing. It's similar to the iPhone 15 Pro, so it's not as good as the S24 Ultra, which is pretty much the type of screen I want in a smartphone moving forward. One talking point I don't really see mentioned as much is how dim these screens can get. And again, the S24 Ultra wins this category then the Pixel 9 Pro, then the iPhone 15 Pro. So if having low brightness is important to you, maybe you like to watch at night next to your spouse in bed, or you like checking your baby's monitor in the dark, then this is something to consider. The sound quality of the speakers are decent on the Pixel 9 Pro. Not the best I've ever used, but they are good enough for casual listening. They get pretty loud, but I find the sound to be a little tinny and maybe distorted even at max volume. While the iPhone speakers are clearer, less muddy, and there's definitely more separation. So the iPhone is still king when it comes to speakers, but the Pixel 9 Pro is not bad, but it's just not great. I also tested the mic quality, especially when it comes to phone calls. I had my wife call me with the Pixel 9 Pro and then again with the iPhone 15 Pro, and then we switched and compared notes and we pretty much had the same experience. The Pixel 9 Pro's mic quality is a bit muffled and less clear. To me, the mic quality of the Pixel 9 Pro sounds like a voicemail recording. Is it a deal breaker? Maybe if you're always on the phone. But these are the type of things you don't necessarily think to look out for unless you have previous experience. And I definitely did not expect that from an $1,100 phone. On a positive note, I've had no issues with my cellular connection. It's been stable, no sudden drops. My brother-in-law warned me about this because it's an issue he has with his Pixel 8 Pro, but that seems to be sorted out with the Pixel 9 Pro. Despite everything I've said so far, using the Pixel 9 Pro has actually been enjoyable. It's fast and smooth, I love the user interface, it feels intuitive, and it's less intimidating compared to when I switched to the S24 Ultra, and everything just looks clean and feels polished. And coming from the Z Fold 6, I didn't realize how much I miss little things like Gboard. It just offers a really nice typing experience, especially since the haptic feedback on the Pixel 9 Pro is amazing. 
It makes interacting with the phone really engaging. The ultrasonic fingerprint scanner has been super accurate and lightning fast, and it's not given me any issues at all. And when combined with face unlock, it's virtually foolproof. I also love the practical features the Pixel has that makes life easier, like circle to search, document scanner directly on the camera app, Auto-rotate face detection so your phone display will only rotate when it makes sense. It's so simple, yet it's such a nice quality of life feature. There's a new screenshots app, which is great for finding and getting information out of your screenshots. And I love the identify songs feature on the lock screen. I love finding songs to listen to, and this is just so much more convenient than using Shazam. Overall, this phone just feels so fun to use, and despite the Tensor G4, not being the most powerful chip on paper, the Pixel 9 Pro still feels very snappy for regular use. When it comes to gaming, I thought the Pixel 9 Pro did a surprisingly good job. I played several games of Warzone Mobile with different settings and it handled most of it relatively well. I did see a noticeable performance gain when the graphics were set to low which is probably what you would need to do for more intensive games. And actually, even on medium settings, I was able to stay competitive on Warzone Mobile, and I did not have any overheating issues. We recently went on a trip to Seattle, and I was able to experience how it's like traveling with the Pixel 9 Pro, and it's a great travel companion. The screen is bright for different lighting scenarios, it has great battery life, and of course, amazing cameras. But one issue that I thought was weird was how slow and inaccurate Google Maps was on this phone. The turn-by-turn -turn navigation was not updating well, and when I would search for directions, it would set my starting point about a mile away from where I was, which was super inconvenient. And that's really annoying, so I've been using my iPhone more for navigating. The turn-by-turn -turn navigation wasn't as accurate, and it wouldn't like, rotate with me which is kind of weird, especially since Google, I'm using Google Maps, which is of course native, should be native to um, the Pixel. And it's kind of just weird that it's not working. Uh, I updated my phone last night and I feel like it's still the same. So I'll be paying attention to that today. And not only that, the app itself would kind of lag. And the only way I would be able to get it to work again is by locking my phone and then basically swiping away and then closing the app and then you know like restarting that way which is kind of a bummer it's kind of weird like i said especially since this is a google phone and i'm using google maps i'm honestly a bit over all the ai push from companies this year but Google's Gemini had me a little bit more interested because of its practical applications. So I tried using Gemini Live to get some information for our trip, and I thought it was pretty cool to use. Hey Gemini, my wife and I are going to Seattle and we're taking our son with us. Do you have any ideas on activities that would be fun for him? Seattle has a ton of great stuff for kids. One idea could be the Woodland Park Zoo. They've got tons of amazing animals. Another option is the Pacific Science Center. They've got interactive exhibits where he can learn while having fun. Or maybe something more laid back, like Discovery Park. There's trails. A Do you beach, know which one playground. of those is better for a one year old? Honestly, both the zoo and Discovery Park would be great for a one year old. A zoo has lots of cool animals to look at, even if your little one might not understand everything. Plus, they usually have stroller-friendly paths, which is a lifesaver. Discovery Park's more laid back. There's wide open grassy areas, a beach to check out, and a playground if they're up for climbing around. It really okay. comes down to Sorry. what sounds more interesting. Which one is less busy, especially um, we're going this Saturday. So which one would be less busy between the two places? Weekends are always a bit busier for family attractions. Mm. Honestly, it depends on what you're looking for. There is, of course, a slight concern about accuracy of information. How much can I actually rely on it? But it's something I can see people will continue to use even after the honeymoon phase is over. However, I am bummed that this is a subscription and something that you have to pay for after a year, especially considering that Apple Intelligent is supposedly free. But we'll see how this plays out. The add me feature is something I was definitely excited to try. I know you can simply ask someone to take a photo of you, but that also can be hit or miss. And by using this feature, you have more control over 
the composition and framing of your shot. And I actually found one good use for this, especially if you're the photographer of the family and you find that you never have good shots of yourself, you can simply use the add me feature and take the photo of a person with the exact framing and shot that you want and then pass them the phone and this will give them a guide on how to take the exact same shot and since it keeps both original photos you can simply use the photo of yourself i have not seen anybody talk about this but i thought that was a pretty cool use case as a photo camera i am so impressed with the pixel 9 pro it delivers amazing photos regardless of the subject and lighting environment the colors are so pleasant and natural looking. I love that I don't have to think much when taking a photo. I can quickly capture the moment and still be able to enjoy the experience. What you're seeing here are shots straight from the camera. I decided not to edit any of the photos so you can exactly see the type of shots you can get with this phone. And I just feel like showing you edited photos kind of defeats the purpose. And just look at them, they look amazing. Comparing the photos with the S24 Ultra and the iPhone 15 Pro, you can see that the colors are richer and more lively while still looking natural. The Pixel 9 Pro tends to boost the shadows a little bit compared to the iPhone 15 Pro and the S24 Ultra. If you look at the monorail tracks on the right, it has a bit more detail and that seems to be the trend in almost any photo that I take. It does a better job of capturing details in the shadows without overblowing the highlights. The Pixel 9 Pro shows a lot more detail in the shadows, maybe even a little too much. I was trying to go for a more artistic shot and I really wanted to capture the contrast of the scene. But overall, I think the Pixel takes better photos in most cases. Take a look at this portrait shot right here. I don't know what's going on with my skin on the iPhone and I think the Pixel 9 Pro was just more flattering. When it comes to the telephoto lens, I prefer the Pixel's 5X compared to the S24 Ultra. It doesn't excessively over sharpen photos and the colors are more pleasant just like the iPhone. And despite the iPhone 15 Pro only having 3X, I'm really surprised how well it's doing, especially in this next photo. First, the colors on the Pixel 9 Pro just look so good and you can see more of the difference when zoomed in. No doubt it's the best out of the three in terms of detail and color. And in my opinion, the S24 Ultra is second when it comes to detail, but the iPhone 15 Pro is second when it comes to color. However, when it comes to video, iPhone is definitely still king. There's an apparent lens switching which seems to affect exposure, color, and framing on the Pixel 9 Pro, whereas the iPhone is more consistent. Also, the Pixel doesn't seem to handle shadows as well in video, so I would say that the S24 Ultra has a slight edge over the Pixel. The Pixel 9 Pro also has a weird warping going on, which you can see in the beginning and end of this clip. It's definitely something to take note of and hopefully Google can fix this in an upcoming software update. Personally, I don't really switch lenses when recording. I often choose the lens I want and then I film and I find the videos I'm able to take are definitely good enough, especially for just everyday use and documenting life. One very impressive thing about the Pixel 9 Pro is its battery life. I'm able to get five to six hours of screen time on average. It all depends on your use case, of course, but as an iPhone 15 Pro user, I think this is a big upgrade, especially when you consider that the battery of the Pixel 9 Pro is bigger than the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is insane. So is the Pixel 9 Pro actually a good S24 Ultra or iPhone replacement? I think it depends on what you're looking for. I think for most iPhone users, the iPhone will still be more appealing as an all around phone because it has a more powerful chip, almost as good photo camera, but a much better video camera. Or you can even get a 256 gig S24 Ultra from Best Buy, which can offer a better experience for productivity, gaming, and entertainment and it's probably more bang for your buck. But I don't know about you guys, I don't always buy things because it's worth it, but sometimes it's simply because I want it. For the same reason other people buy a certain brand of bag, watch, or car, sometimes it's more about the overall experience and how it fits into your lifestyle more than the price tag or the specs. In this case, it's about how the phone makes you feel when you use it day in and day out, and the Pixel 9 Pro is a very fun phone to use. It's an amazing photo camera with great battery life and a ton of cool features. And if you can snag one on a deal, then it becomes an even more enticing option. If you're still unsure, don't worry, I'll be making a further comparison for the Pixel 9 Pro 
and the iPhone 16 Pro when it comes out, so stay tuned. If you made it this far in the video, type mega in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.